Anyway, let's watch the uh, let's watch the Twitch. Oh, Norm Dersh is live. All right, and we'll start off with Norm question. versus the Dersh. This is a Adam big Dersh fucking face off. About what we're seeing, and then we'll do the Twitch uh, in thing. In Gaza now, is to many people uh, now the very terrorism which Israel set out to destroy. This is a what huge deal for losers like me. I'll be honest. It is terrorism. Like way bigger than skipping the top of the hour ad break and forgetting to run it and then telling you at the top of the hour there's a three minute ad break and if you no longer want to see it, all you need to do is subscribe. Hamas has a strategy. It's called the CNN strategy. I call it the dead baby strategy. You're a gross person for saying that. Doing what every democracy would do, responding. Then hide your tunnels and your fighters and your rockets behind civilians, knowing that Israel no matter how hard they try to avoid civilian casualties, and why would Israel ever want to kill a civilian? It's absurd. It hurts them tremendously. But every time Israel kills a civilian, the world condemns them. The United Nations condemns them. And then that process continues over and over and over again. The people who are being killed today are being killed as a result of Hamas actions. Hamas started it. Hamas uses human shields. If Hamas lay down its arms, if it surrendered, if it uh, agreed to give up control, if it uh, closed its tunnels, if it stopped its rockets, uh, then no civilians would be killed. So it's a terrible tragedy. There's no good solution. There's no perfect solution. If Israel stops now, Hamas continues to do it over and over and over again. If Israel continues, it gets condemned and loses friends abroad and even risks using the, the United oh, States. It's no, a terrible really? dilemma for Israel. All the responsibility, all the fault of Aww. Hamas for starting this. And That's let so me just sad end with Israel one quote. Friends On the day after, too many babies. literally the day after these horrible tragedies with murders and rapes and robberies, this is what Mr. Finkelstein said. It warms every fiber of my soul, every fiber of my soul. He called the people who murdered these innocent Jews, many of them peaceniks, he called them part of the heroic resistance. And he compared them to the Jews who were fighting against Nazis in the Warsaw Ghetto. It's that kind of animosity toward Israel before Israel fired a single shot, which makes it clear that no matter what Israel does, it's going to be condemned by people like Norman Finkelstein and by the United Nations General Assembly. I think it was Abi Ibn who once said, if the General Assembly were asked to vote on an Algerian resolution that the earth is flat and that Israel flattened it, it would win... 128 to 32 with 65 abstentions, and he would name each of the people. So the United Nations General Assembly, okay. Human Rights Watch, Doctors Without Borders, these are not objective assessments. Norm is going to fucking in a eat very tough Dersh's lunch and, and the dinner, dude. Norman Finkelstein was blacklisted. Norman Finkelstein was blacklisted from all academia for, destru for eviscerating the Jewish this man. Okay. Norman Finkelstein was Norman Finkelstein was blacklisted from all academia for, for eviscerating this man. Okay? We're cooking well, his ass. I won't address the question of my remarks on October 7th because we already went over that ground in the previous program, and so it would be a waste of your viewers' time if I were to re revisit that. Yeah, that's fair so enough. So let me deal with the subs. Yeah, thank you. So let's deal with the substantive issue. Number one, what you seem to be describing as a new development, namely Israel's indiscriminate assaults in Gaza. That's hardly a new development, with all due respect to you. I, I've lost the sound. Uh, Israel from... Is oh, no, Dersh is doing the... I hit you with the one-two, and now I've, I've lost the from, sound. Uh, literally, day one, set out as its goals. So if I can quote, um, first of all, the defense minister, there will be no electricity, no food, no water, no fuel. Everything is closed. We are fighting human animals, and we are acting accordingly. Now, that was not directed at Hamas. That was directed at the entire population of Gaza. I think your listeners understand what is the consequence of denying a civilian population all water, all food, all fuel, and all electricity? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that that is a recipe for genocide. Number two, 
you quoted or you had on Douglas Murray, who made a distinction between what he called the deliberate targeting of civilians versus the indiscriminate targeting of civilians. Not to want to sound pedantic, but Israel's leading authority on international law is a fellow named Yoram Dinstein, who I'm sure Alan Dershowitz knows. And Mr. Dinstein, or Dr. Dinstein, he stated that there is no fundamental difference under international law between the deliberate targeting of civilians and the indiscriminate targeting of civilians. There is no substantive difference. Therefore, under international law, according to Yoram Dinstein, Israel is targeting the civilian population of Gaza. That's another indication from the get-go, not from yesterday, not, when, not from when it was revealed to President Biden, but from the get-go, Israel has been engaging in a genocidal war in Gaza. Now, the genocidal war Stop takes fucking complaining about how forms. slow he is. Again, I'm going to cite you old quotes. So let's take Giora Island, who was the head of Put Israel's on National this is a Security Council, the equivalent of our CIA. And he said, quote, Israel needs to create a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Gaza will become a place where no human being can exist. Now, I'm not here to try to persuade Mr. Dershowitz or Professor Dershowitz. I am here to try to enlighten your listeners. So I would like them to cogitate, to meditate over what does it mean to say Gaza will become a place where no human beings can exist. Mr. Island, the former head of the National Security Council, went on to say, severe epidemics in the south of the Gaza Strip will bring victory closer and reduce casualties among IDF soldiers. And then there is Mr. Netanyahu, the Prime Minister. Not on one occasion, not from the spur of the moment, but twice in national addresses in, to the nation, very soberly, Mr. Netanyahu said, remember what Amalek did to you. This is a war between the sons of light and the sons of darkness. Now, as Professor Dershowitz surely knows, because he attended Hebrew school, Actually, he grew up just a few blocks from me, or I should say I grew up a few blocks from him because he's older. He surely knows that in the midst of a war, in a country that is schooled in the Bible, that when you say your enemy is Amalek, then you are calling for the destruction, the killing of every man woman, and child. So with all due regard to Mr. Dershowitz, I have to say this issue of human shielding... Chatter, shut the fuck up. Totally it's live. I can't put it in a faster speed. Because it doesn't even come into play in this particular situation. I hate some of you the dumb fucking Zoomers. from the get-go denying food, or worse, water, -year -olds electricity, who think, who and fuel to the entire in the chat. civilian population. The order from the get-go to turn Gaza into a place that is not able to sustain human life. The order from the get-go in this battle between the sons of light and the sons of darkness. Okay. I repeat, 
I do not believe it requires a rocket scientist to figure out that from day one, which is to say two I, months I get the point. ago, yeah, I, you've made the Israel point. has been waging a war of okay. genocide in Gaza. You, you've made Thank the point. Thank you so much. You've made the point. Come back to Professor Dershowitz. Uh, here's the problem, it seems to me. I've just listened to Norman Finkelstein at length uh, outlining... The, that side of the well sourced argument. as always. It's very hard. Literally, when you well, look well sourced as always. Happen. Come again with a one two punch. In the last two weeks in particular, wearing so down his interlocutor. Israel doesn't really seem to care if it levels Gaza to the ground. As long as it can get rid of Hamas. My issue with that is having defended their moral right to defend themselves as a country, is I don't think they're going to eliminate Hamas. And they're certainly not going to eliminate the ideology. And they're Hamas. going to basically end up with. A Gaza that's flattened, two million people displaced. Where are they going to live? Who's going to run Gaza? How does this actually play out, other than catastrophic? Well, Pierce badly? Morgan asking about it uh, will asking about what Israel needs to do because of what Hamas has done. We have to remember first which of is all, absolutely you judge nothing. Alan Dershowitz is immediately actions, going back to October seventh to relitigate October seventh to say, look, the violence started with Hamas and has nothing to do with the Israeli government, or individuals. Dinstein is 100% wrong. I'll give you an example. Is there no difference between Nazis putting Jews deliberately, six million of them, into gas chambers and, and other means of death, deliberately targeting them, and what the United States did at Hiroshima and Nagasaki? They may both be wrong, but there's an enormous difference between deliberately targeting civilians such as the Nazis did during the Holocaust, and, and, and engaging in war actions, which you know are going to inevitably cause death of civilians. So there's an enormous, enormous difference there. Then he talks about Amalek and Hamas. I, I know the Bible very well. And, of course, uh, Amalek was a group of people that uh, sought to destroy Israel. But when people refer to Amalek, they don't refer to the Palestinian people. They refer to Hamas, and Hamas is Amalek. Hamas is the Nazi party. Hamas are not heroic resistance people. They cut off the breasts of women and throw them around. They what? behead children. They put children and burn them to death. Wait, yes, they what? should be destroyed. It's going to be very difficult. This is not going to have an easy solution. Israel may in the end not be able yep, to destroy Yep, there it is. Uh, uh, destroy, going uh, back to October Hamas. 7th and uh, making stuff up. Classic playbook maneuver here. Germany, uh, Hyper, do not Nazism focus on the 18,000 murdered Japanese. Palestinians. And in the end, what happened is the Japanese and the Germans were grateful for it. And then the United States what? and Great Britain helped rebuild Germany and Japan and turn them into great allies. That's my hope for Gaza. My hope for Gaza is that the people of Gaza will finally the Japanese be Hamas. famously and, grateful for the atomic bomb and that the United States and Europe can then rebuild it better than it was before like a Marshall Plan uh, and hope that definitely not like generational scarring from that sort of thing will then have a two-state solution yeah, but I've been in okay, favor but let me just jump in there uh, since 1970 Adam, let me just yeah. jump in there only tonight the Israeli ambassador to the UK made it abundantly clear Two-state solution is gone. Israel, I'll, I'll play he's you the wrong. clip. I'll play you the clip, here. Yeah, but he's wrong. He is there did. still a chance for a two-state solution? I think it's about time for the world to realize the Oslo paradigm failed on the 7th but of October, and we need to build horny. a new one. They're getting horny, I'm telling in you. Order to build but a new does one, that new one include the Palestinians living in they're the getting state horny they're, they're getting I horned up is, they're getting arrogant the again question is what this is new Palestinians are on the other side this is what israel no, realized they have a state of the answer is absolutely no you see <laughs> when you hear that well, this wrong. confirms this but confirms yeah, but hang on alan this confirms what many palestinians yeah. have feared that for 20 years or more uh, the israeli government and netanyahu in particular have had absolutely zero interest in any two-state solution and, and so if that's but not... let's remember that... I like that, I like that Alan Dershowitz is saying the Israel primary was... communicator, the, uh, the fucking ambassador to the UK is just talking out of her 2001, ass. 2001, they came very close to 2001. 2005, 2007, the vast majority of Israeli people, Israel's a democracy, unlike Hamas. The Israeli people will vote for a two-state solution if the circumstances are right, if there is no Hamas. Israel's a democracy. And if the Palestinian it's not. It's Authority will have elections, and if the people of 
the West Bank and Gaza vote yeah, for again, a peaceful again, Palestinian okay, I'm going to come, I'm going to come back there to There will be a two-state solution. I'm going to come back to Professor Figgerson yeah. in one second. But again, today, Netanyahu has said explicitly there can be no Hamas run or Fatah run Gaza after this. He said it today. Yeah, he's, but got he's, no not be in power after he's got this. no intention of either he's Hamas not... or Fatah running Gaza. So who Fatah. is going to run it? He, but I he's think not he, be, he he's thinks not he wants to. Be, Piers Morgan cooking the Dersh be because the Dersh is so this, out of pocket. A national security government, probably headed by people like Gantz, maybe a Bennett. Uh, the people of Israel are going to decide, and the people of Israel get to make that decision, and they're going to decide on a two-state solution. The one thing that's Whoa, clear that's crazy. is with Gaza <laughs> dominated by Hamas. There cannot be a two-state okay, solution. Let me go back to but Professor without Figgerson. Hamas, okay. anything's possible. Okay, I agree with that. I don't think Hamas can possibly be left in control. I just don't think that this mission is going to eradicate Hamas in the time scale which America is right. now clearly laying down for their support. Professor Finkelstein, you may be right. How do you see this playing out from here? Okay, I would like to say a couple of things, if you don't mind. If it's okay. Yeah. Number one. Uh, Professor Dershowitz attaches a lot of uh, importance to the, what the people of Israel want. And so let's look at what the people of Israel want. According to the most recent polls, 60% of Israelis oh, he, believe... Oh, he's hitting him with the Israeli Israelis, Democracy Institute. 60% of Jewish Israelis believe that <laughs> Cook Israel up, is not using sufficient force in Gaza. Totaling. 60% believe that Israel should, or the government, should escalate Totaling, the amount uh, of force. 94% of Israeli Jews in, in the latest IDI Number poll. Two, it's the Israeli government, excuse me, it's the Israeli people who democratically elected this ultra right wing government. It's not as if the claims are made that Hamas has been imposed on the people of Gaza. But there is no imposition in Israel. I quite agree with Professor Dershowitz, at least for Jewish Israelis, for Jewish Israelis, it's a democratic country. And they democratically elected the ultra right wing government. So I think those are two very good indications. I can't say they're very auspicious indications, but they are very good indications of what the Israeli people want. Number three, I'm not now going to go into a long disquisition on the history of the so-called peace process, but I would ask your listeners, if they have the time, patience, and interest, to just Google what's called the peaceful settlement of the question of Palestine. And that's a General Assembly resolution that comes up every single year for decades. And it calls for that two-state settlement on the June 1967 border, and it calls for a peaceful settlement on the basis of international law. Now, if you look at the voting record every single year, it's the whole world, including the state of Palestine, on one side, supporting a two-state settlement on the basis of international law, and on the other side opposing, it's the United States, Israel, and usually some South Pacific atolls like Tuvalu, Nauru, and Micronesia, and the Marshall Islands. That record it is didn't for me. written in stone. It, didn't it have can't on my be end. changed. And it makes very clear what is the obstacle to a settlement. The obstacle is Israel, backed by the United States, opposes a two-state settlement on the basis of international law, the law that has been defined Tuvalu by the International Pog. Court of Justice, the legal arm of the United Nations. Now, wrong. I'm going to make one remark now, which you will find perhaps controversial or unacceptable, Piers. However, I hope you'll allow me to say it, and then you can engage it, as you said, in a civil fashion. You say that the actions of Hamas have disqualified it from any participation 
in the peaceful what about the settlement. action of Israel? Now, I am not going to make any brief for Hamas. It's for the people of Palestine to decide who should be their leaders, who should represent them. But I do have to ask you, peers, and I respect you. So I'm asking you this as a matter of not rhetoric, but one intelligent person to another. I'm asking a simple question. If it's the case that the actions of Hamas on October 7th disqualify it from being party to a peaceful settlement, Roughly 1,200 people were killed, about 30 of them being children. Why is it not then also the case that the actions of the state of Israel since October 7th, the deliberate, the deliberate war of genocide against the people of Gaza, which has left about 15,000 people dead, not 1,200, 15,000, and has left dead not 30 children, but has left dead about 7,000 children. And as we speak now, a 7,000 more children are threatened with death Hold because on. of starvation. I ask you, as a logical proposition, why isn't the state of Israel disqualified? From any final Bro, he took the long way. The he took question. the long way home and to explain that. One last thing, because you ask, what do I believe? I will tell you what I believe. I believe number one, immediately after the war, you could have just you, you comes definitely could have reduced that a little bit. And the blockade I think. of Gaza, that cruel, inhuman blockade of Gaza, that war crime in Gaza, that crime against humanity, the blockade of Gaza, it has to be lifted. But once there's a ceasefire and once that inhuman blockade of Gaza is lifted, once the walls of that concentration camp come tumbling down, then I see two steps. Step number one, there have to be war crimes prosecutions. I have no problem in saying on both sides, but there must be accountability. You cannot get away with executing a war of genocide in broad okay. daylight and then continue. And number two, there has to be a settlement on the basis of international law. That is the only okay. consensus basis for ending the conflict once and for all. OK. I want to just... Give a very quick reply, please, Professor Dershow. I was going to end it there, but I want to give you a right of reply on that one point. You're a lawyer. Uh, this point about international law, when President Biden, the head of, of uh, America, <clears throat> the biggest, strongest ally for Israel, comes out and says that the bombing has been indiscriminate. He is accusing Israel directly of committing war crimes. That is a war crime, if it has indeed been indiscriminate. Is this war now at a stage where America may pull its support because they believe that Israel is breaching international law? It's not. Uh, today, 10 Israeli soldiers, including a commander, were killed in northern Gaza because... Israel refused to bomb that site, which it could easily have done. Instead, it sent in brave 18, 19, 20-year-olds, some of them considered children under the Hamas definition of anybody under 19, and they were all killed because Israel made a decision not to bomb indiscriminately. It has never bombed oh, no. indiscriminately. It oh, no. Alan Dershowitz is President talking about how... People under the age of 18 are not children. Uh-oh. I know he said 19, but uh-oh. Durst, don't do it. It's wrong. It's not indiscriminate. It's very, very discriminate. In terms of international law, uh, uh, Finkelstein is just dead wrong. Uh, I helped draft 242, the UN resolution. I was working with Arthur Goldberg in 1967, and that talked about territorial adjustments. Israel has the right to make some territorial adjustments. They shouldn't have had occupation of uh, civilians, but going back to the 67 borders is an invitation to suicide. And you know when the blockade of Gaza will end? 
the day that Hamas is no longer in control, okay. and the day when rockets no longer attack Israeli civilians, that's the day the blockade will end. The blockade is a good thing designed to prevent Hamas from firing rockets, using tunnels, and doing a repetition of what happened on October Okay, 7th. I, do, I do not agree that the blockade is a good thing. I do think that the occupation of Gaza for many decades has been uh, a terrible thing. The plight of the Palestinians has been horrific. None of that justifies October the 7th, which is uh, one of the worst I like that he said times. I like that he originally said, "Oh, the UK yeah, ambassador uh, bringing up the two state as a non-starter uh, is wrong." This. And then basically arrived at that it's conclusion himself shortly the thereafter by people talking and reaching a resolution. This is so a 2v1. Pierce is thank on you. very much you indeed. Made right? it civilized by your your... Thank you. I appreciate right. it. Thank you. Well, on says the next. Uh definitely God, I want them to duke it out for much longer. Like, I want them to oil each other up and just, like, fucking go at it, dude. It sucks. It sucks that this is, like... It sucks that this is the, the only form of, of Norm uh, Norm Dersh uh, content that we can get. Yeah. There is no out for Israel here because its actions are fucking completely uh, and utterly a moral failure, uh, war crimes, just unacceptable, right? So it's a really difficult thing to have to try and defend and defend so vociferously in the way that Dersh is doing. Now, obviously, he has a lot of experience defending Israel's unjustifiable war crimes. He's been doing this for quite a long time. Um, just like Norm is very good at documenting Israel's war crimes, and he has been doing that for quite a long time. But the issue here, uh, the issue here is that, like, for Dershowitz, how is there still relevant? That's a tenured Harvard professor you're talking about. Put some respect on his name. That's Mr. Uh, I'm going to argue about the constitutionality of, of lowering the age of consent. That's Alan. I'm going to talk about the constitutionality of lowering the age of consent, but just from a constitutional argument. Dershowitz, that's, he, he did that. Um, the goat. The goat. Famous friend of Jeffrey Epstein. Y you notice he was like kind of, uh, you know, he was kind of sad probably because... He's still mourning the loss of his bestie, um, who he uh, flew on the Lolita Express with multiple times. But don't worry. He said he always had his underwear on. Um, these are all real Alan Dershowitz quotes. I know it sounds crazy. Alan Dershowitz is much like Israel. When you bring up genuine facts about his life, people will t people that are you know uninitiated with Alan Dershowitz will go, you're being anti-Semitic. There's no fucking way what you're saying is true. Okay. Except, no, it is literally true for Alan Dershowitz, okay? It's just like, it's the same, it's the same shit uh, whenever like, we talk about a new thing that we've learned that Israel has been doing. And you're like, come on, dude. That's like, you, know, you just made that shit up. That's like a fucking insane thing to say. Same with Alan Dershowitz. Alan Dershowitz is also like Israel. They love the murder of innocents. See his most famous client. There it is, obviously. Um, my favorite thing about Alan Dershowitz is that they always have him on. They always have him on Fox News, like always. And he sometimes, he, he ends up always finding a way to talk about Jeffrey Epstein victims, no matter what they have him on for. 